picking up where we left off, we're going to evaluate with some exact values based on our unit circle, actually, for inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. So it, with triad number two, it says draw the angle described and use it to evaluate the expression. So I have the arc sine, and that's an actually an old term, the arc sine or arc cosine, uh, but that's one that I tend to use. So yeah, inverse sine, arc cosine, or inverse sine or arc sine, same, same idea. All right, so draw the angle. Well, in this case, again, we want to remember those restrictions. So sine and tangent are restricted to quadrants one and four, but notice they are negative pi over two to pi over two. Okay, so it's not three pi over two to pi over two. That wouldn't make any sense. But those are, that's the restriction on arc sine or an arc tangent. Arc cosine is from zero to pi. So when we draw these angles, they're going to be in those respective quadrants. So first off, inverse sine of one half. So the sine value is one half, which means it, that's a positive sine value, and it's up slightly above zero. So that actually is in the first quadrant, again, close to zero, but yeah, closer to zero than it is 90, because that is our output, that is our y coordinate. All right, now. Given what we know about the unit circle, that is the angle pi over 6. So arc sine of 1 half is pi over 6. All right, for our next value, we have arc sine of negative root 2 over 2. Right, now, we know we are in quadrants 1 and 4. Uh, now, negative root 2 over 2, the only place in those quadrants that the sine is root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, is in quadrant 4, and it's actually a 45 degree angle from the positive axis. So this, this angle right here is actually a negative pi over 4. Negative pi over 4. All right. Now, arc cosine of negative root 3 over 2. We'll have to think back to our unit circle for where that is, but we know that it's in quadrants 1 or 2. And since the cosine is negative, that is in quadrant 2. I'm just going to draw this angle generically in the second quadrant. But again, let's think about our unit circle. All right, so when we have a, this is an x value that is large, well, further away from the origin, an x value that way. So when we have a larger x value than our y value, that would be a 30 degree angle. Well, that's a 30 degree or a pi over 6 away from this axis here. That angle is pi over 6. So that means this angle over here is 5 pi over 6. Right? That's a pi. So 6 pi over 6. Take away 1. You have 5 pi over 6. Finally, for this question, inverse tangent of 1. For that, we want to think about where tangent is positive. That is in the first quadrant. That's a slope. Remember that tangent. You can think of that as being a sl the slope of that segment, that ray. So where is tangent have a ratio of 1? Well, that's definitely at pi over 4. So in the first quadrant, we have pi over 4. Try number three. Draw the angle described and use it to evaluate the expression. So similar to the last question, we have arc sine of negative one. So draw a my axes there. Arc sine of negative one. So once again, arc sine is restricted to the first or the fourth quadrants. Where it's negative is going to have to be in the second quadrant all, or the fourth quadrant, although that is um, not exactly true. It's actually on the axis because we include the axes in there. So that would be at an angle of negative pi over 2. So you're thinking about your unit circle and then working backwards to what those angles were that produced those values. That's what you're doing, right? Because if I think of this as being the the sine of negative pi over 2, I'd go to negative pi over 2, take the y value, that'd be negative 1, right? So that's really how, how we're thinking about that. All right, now inverse tangent of negative 1, 
Once again, tangent is in quadrants one to four, and it's going to be negative, going to be negative in the sec in the fourth quadrant, fourth quadrant down here, and that is as is usual a pi over four. So since it's in the fourth quadrant, that'll be equal to negative pi over four. All right, arc cosine of negative one. So that is an x value. We know we're in the first or second quadrants. It's an x value that is negative, negative 1, so that would be actually at pi. All right. Finally, arc cosine of 1 half. So that, that value is positive, that ratio is positive. It's an x value that's small, so it's closer to the y-axis than the x-axis. Since we're in the first or second quadrant, that is leading me to think that is pi over 3. So as you can probably tell here, having your unit circle memorized and familiar with those things will be very useful as you're trying to evaluate some of these. Okay. Now number 4, try number 4 says evaluate arc cosine of negative 0.4 using a calculator. So for this, we will legitimately just pull up our calculator. Now, if you're using a TI-84, I believe that is going to be second and the cosine. You'll, it's it's going to be a little text above the cosine. I'm actually using a class calc, so I'm going to choose trig. I have a list of nine, uh, let's see, three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah, 18 different ch choices for this, so I'm going to choose the inverse cosine, so cosine to the negative one. Type negative 0.4, close parentheses, and then I'm going to make sure that I am in radians. Let's make sure I'm in radians. So that is actually equal to, or approximately, 1.982 when you're in radians, uh, which is 113, 113 point five seven eight in degrees. So if you got 113.578, you need to switch your calculator to radians. Okay, um, Just notice that. If there's nothing stated here indicating in the question that we need to be in degrees, then we're not. We're not. All right, so all the other functions are in similar places. Um, second, I believe it's second sine, second tangent. Um, there is no tangent, actually. So the, anyways, there are some menus, though, that you can find that. So we can talk about that more in class if you need to, if you are having trouble finding that, or leave a comment here, and I can tell you where, how to find that in your calculator specifically. All right, number five. Solve the triangles below for the angle theta. So in this first triangle, we have the angle theta. Uh, it's a right triangle, of course, with an angle theta and the sides here, the two that were given, are the adjacent side is 9, and the hypotenuse is 12. Now, because we are given the adjacent and the hypotenuse, that actually means the ratio we have is cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which those values are 9 and 12, respectively. So cosine theta equals 9 twelfths. We'll go ahead and reduce that to be 3 fourths. But that means that the angle theta is equal to inverse cosine of 3 fourths. Okay. So now we'll pull up the same thing. Use how to find this on your calculator. This is why we need to do that. If we pull up our calculator and go to and find arc cosine of 3 fourths, that is approximately. 0 0.723, and once again, that's in radians. If you find you get 41.41, 41.41, then that means you are in degrees. Make sure you're in the right, in the right uh, mode. And again, the question has to tell you. Otherwise, we assume we are in radians since we're not given. So notice we're given sides, not the angle. So we don't, we aren't given that. Now the the units for that. However, if it said theta in degree, and had a little degree marker there, that would certainly indicate it's in degrees. Okay, now the next triangle we have, 
is once again a right triangle. We have the angle theta given, and we have sides that correspond to the opposite, which is 6, and the hypotenuse, which is 10. So this tells us we have a ratio of sine theta equals 6 over 10. So again, that's 3 fifths. So using the relationships we know, that would mean that theta is equal to inverse sine of 3 fifths. All right, so once again, go to trig, choose the inverse sine. And in radians, that is approximately 0 0.644. As I, as I noted before, the angles that you're given are either in the they're either in the first and second quadrant or the first and the fourth. Now, the way these these triangles are oriented with all positive sides, these are all first quadrant triangles. So it makes sense that our that our uh, angle values are between zero and 1.57. That's pi over two. It's all they're all between between zero and pi over two. All right, now that brings us to the end of this little segment. Um, so be sure and come back to the next segment for compositions of trig of inverse trigonometric functions.